We all wish we could bring our Disney vacation home with us, right? To have that Disney feeling every day? Well, why not start your day the Disney way with a Disney blend from Joffrey's Coffee and Tea Company? With over 23 varieties to choose from, from the French Bistro you find in your resort room to the Yachtsman's Steakhouse and Gico, of course, and now Joffrey's newest Disney blend, Le Cellier. Why not start your day with that Disney magic? Order yours today at joffreys.com. Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. While your group is together, now is a great opportunity to pick a time and place to meet should you become separated in the park. All right. You ready, Bob? Nope. I know it. That's why we're going to start. No. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Scott. I'm Bob Collar. This is episode 365 of ResortLoop.com. So just to get this straight, when I say, no, I'm not ready. Yes. That, that, you, that means nothing to you. Nothing. All right. The show so must all, go I've, on. I've always got to be ready. Always be ready. You'll find that out in a few weeks. <laughs> Bob's got to bring his yes, A game. I will. Yeah. What's happening in a few weeks? Well, tell us about your looper meet down there, Bob. When are you going to be there? Me? You. Uh, I'm going to be down there uh, October 25th and 26th. Make sure you guys come and say hello. Find me. I put out my itinerary on uh, our website and on uh, uh, Facebook. So uh, make sure you come and please say hello. I want to meet everybody. I want to uh, get as many pictures with uh, as many folks in Looper Nation as I possibly can. That's kind of a goal of mine on the, this trip. We're not going in the parks, so you don't have to worry about having park tickets. Uh, most of the activities are going to be uh, around Disney Springs, so uh, please come and uh, come and say hello. Uh, as a matter of fact, Tim, mm-hmm. I, I booked my trip. I, it was so easy. It was to easy. Book my trip. It was a piece of cake. What made because, it so easy uh, for you? Well, I went through uh, PeopleMoverTravel.com, you know, our partner in in uh, travel. Yes. And uh, and talked to, to Tyler, and uh, it was a piece of cake. And I he mean, hooked you up. Hook, hook me up. I didn't have to worry about anything. I had to make a, an adjustment to my uh, travel plans mm-hmm, at one mm-hmm. point. Uh, you know, he, he took care of it. it. It was done in a, less than uh, like an hour. Wow. He had the uh, changes all taken taken care of. If only he was you know, here, if, if, you could thank him. What's that? If only he was here, you could thank him. I, that's what I was just going to say. I, I'd really like to say thank you to him, but, uh, you know, pff, he never listens. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what'd you so say? What? We, what? Oh. I'm who sorry, what'd you say? I wasn't listening. <laughs> hey, Tyler. Tim, who is that? <laughs> that is Tyler Braun from People Mover Travel joining us on the show. Hey, Tyler. Hey, gentlemen. How's it going? Ooh, it's a good thing I was saying good things. Wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't know I was here. <laughs> <laughs> he snuck in the studio. That's snuck right. In. And palatial it is. You guys weren't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Did you throw some coins in the uh, fountain out front? Oh, yeah. Over the left shoulder, right? Turned around over the left shoulder. There that way go. I'll come back, I think. There you go. When we're all well, done, I'm going to find uh, love here in the studio. So, <laughs> and just to let you know, that's not that kind of fountain. So, Got it. Uh, all right. Well, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Tim, what yes. are we going to talk to Tyler about today? Well, Tyler's going to tell us about some new specials that are going on, going to be going on at Disney. But first, we have actually have a question from Super Looper, Stacy Gilbert. You'll remember her from episode 285. Absolutely. She was the one. She had her trip. Had a great time. Did everything wrong. She said. <laughs> <laughs> but had a great yeah. time and wants to go back and she reached out to us and she wants to know because you know she has a larger family she wants to know what is the cheapest time to go like what is the best time of year best resorts to stay at you know if you have to go you know during the summer what are the best time to go in the summer she wants to know all the um, options for a more a reasonable trip to va- uh, vacation at Walt Disney World so we're having so time saving, on saving some money saving some money so you can just spend it somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good thing. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. So uh, let's uh, let's start, uh, Tyler. So what what's going on right now as far as because there's some pretty good deals out there, right? Yeah. Well, okay. So just as of this morning, um, there was two new things announced. So the uh, the play, stay, and dine that they've done the last couple of years, they're doing again, um, and that was just announced this morning. Um, so the, the, the dates for that, um, is it's going to be January 1st through March 7th of next year. So that's springtime. Um, and to book that it's going to be October 3rd 
through through December 21st. So make sure over the next like uh, what two and two months, two and a half months, um, that if you're planning on going in in March, you know January through March, make sure to contact me so we can get you in before that December 21st to get you this deal. Um, so the play, stay, and dine deal. Um, a lot of people think it's uh, free dining because they say play, stay, and dine, uh, but it, that's not exactly what it is. Um, so what that is is uh, it's anywhere between like nine and seventeen percent off of your entire package, mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to include hotel, your park tickets, and your dining. Um, depending on who you ask, some people say, well, it's not really a percentage off your package; it's forty to fifty percent off the dining plan aspect of it, uh, and the room and tickets are full price. But it, it all breaks down the same way. So that's kind of how that works um, and it's not a specific percentage it kind of depends on the amount of people it depends on uh, you know the the room type and the resort and the tickets all that mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's one of the things that just contact me let me know how many people are in your group uh, just go to peoplemovertravel.com fill out that quote form um, and then I can take care of it from there and figure out what's going to be the best uh, arrangement there to get you the best deal for that place, stay and dine. Um, Great. Okay. That yeah. one does have a, uh, just real quick, it has a three night minimum and two day ticket minimum. Um, so if you're mm -hmm. only going for a day or two days, uh, mm -hmm. that one might not be for you. But just so you guys know um, off the top there. Uh, the other thing they announced is the Gift of Family Magic package, uh, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, the Gift of Family Magic offer. And that is up to 25% off your rooms. Um, and there's two sets of, of dates there. Uh, so it's most nights. You always got to say most nights because it's not all nights. <laughs> most right, nights, right. December 15th through the 23rd of this year. And then January 1st through April 8th. Um, mm. And so that generally translates to uh, about 15% off the value resorts, 20% off the moderate resorts, and 25% off deluxe or deluxe villas. But of course... With all things Disney, there are exceptions to those rules. But that give or take right. is about where that's going to land there. Um, and again, that has to be booked between now and December 21st. So if you want to go in the spring, make sure you contact me here quickly. And on both of those, Disney only has a certain number of rooms allocated for those. So mm -hmm. the earlier you get in, the better. Okay. Now, let me ask awesome. you this question. Um, I, my family is throwing me a curveball. They're actually talking about maybe wanting to go down in uh, November. Is there anything going on uh, in November, any kind of uh, discounts? Um, so actually, almost everything in uh, like October, November is already sold out. Um, and wow. there's there's really not a whole lot left. There are still some rooms open um, for certain dates. Um, so if you if you just contact me and let me know your dates of kind of what you're looking at, um, I can look into it for you. But just know that a lot of even the annual pass holder stuff is getting getting to pretty uh, minimal pickings. <laughs> right. Wow. That's yeah. why you want, kind of yeah. want to pounce early if there's a discount out, out when you think you might want to go. Exactly. That's what I was saying. So, yeah, it, you can book these Play, Stay, and Dine and the Gift of Family Magic offer through December 21st. But, I mean, midway through November, those could be pretty much sold out. So, uh, right. and, you're, and the resort you might want to stay at might be gone you exactly. know, pretty quick. So. Yeah, I had, I had some uh, annual pass holders contact me recently, and there's still an annual pass holder discount available. But the only thing that was available was the boardwalk and maybe one or two others. But it was still, you know, six, seven hundred dollars a night. So even with that wow. annual pass holder discount. Um, you know, it sells out pretty quickly. So once you know you're going to go or thinking about going, contact me because I can even put a three day hold on your reservation. So if you're if you're thinking, well, maybe we'll do it, give you an extra three days to put that deposit down. But we can save that room for you. Right. Right. Well, uh, let's uh, how far in advance can uh, at this point in time, can people book through you? How far in, into 2017 can they do that? Well, you can go pretty far, um, and you can actually even go in slightly into 2018. I wouldn't mm. recommend doing that because there's a whole lot of caveats, um, but we can pretty much get all the way through December now um, and, and do a pretty good job there with what it's actually going to be. The 2018 rates, we can go through January, but I wouldn't do that yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. That way, you know, if if something changes, if some of these packages come come available, Tyler can take care of that over at PeopleMoverTravel.com. He can put those discounts, apply those to your trip, and and you've already got it booked. I mean, it's it's oh, just yeah. you know, it's it's nice. What's the deal with this uh, new annual pass holder discounts? 
Oh yeah, so um, so just announced. Uh, it was just this Saturday. Um, so annual pass holders now get twenty percent off of Disney merchandise and ten percent off food and uh, non-alcoholic beverages at table service restaurants. Nice. However, because uh, it used to be ten percent across the board, but now mm-hmm. in honor of the forty-five years um, that just happened on Saturday. Um, you can now get 20 percent off of food and beverage at 45 different restaurants across property um, wow. and there are some quick service in there too so go to disney's website and you can get that full list of uh, of what's now available so 20 percent off of merchandise across the board and 20 percent off of 45 different restaurants so that's that's pretty huge that is huge that's uh, including quick service that's fantastic go ahead tim no oh. I was going to say, Tyler, that three-day hold's a fantastic idea because I know we've been sitting around the house and like we'll like play with dates on like a Saturday, and then uh, oh, like, absolutely, you no, know, we can maybe go with you know these days in a couple months, but you got you know you got to check with your work schedule and like maybe the rest of your family to see if everybody else can make it. So that that three-day holds and locking that in is a fantastic uh, perk. Absolutely, and there's no there's no uh, need to buy it after that. So they have that three days to think about it, and then you think, ah, oh, you know what, that's not going to work. We can just release it, you know, no harm, no foul. You don't even have to put a credit card down. They'll hold it just as a complimentary basis. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, that is fantastic. All right, so let's get to Stacy's question. When is the least expensive time of the year for us to visit Walt Disney World? Okay, so several things go into getting you the least expensive option in Disney World. Um, the the biggest factors are the time of year, the resort you pick, your ticket options, your dining options, and the makeup of your family. So what I mean by that is, I mean obviously two adults are going to be less expensive than you know two adults and four kids, and two adults are going to be or four adults are going to be more expensive than two adults, two kids, so on and so forth. So however, that kind of uh, all adds up. Um, So those are the biggest factors, time of year, resort, ticket, dining, and the makeup of your family. I know, got to make it nice and easy, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's Disney. That's right. Oh, yeah. Um, So the cheapest time of year to go, uh, it tends to correspond with the the least crowded times. Um, So generally speaking, the second week of January after uh, Marathon Weekend through February is going to be one of the uh, least crowded times to go. Labor Day through the start of the Food and Wine Festival. Then from the end of Food and Wine Festival through Thanksgiving. And the Monday after Thanksgiving to the week before Christmas. And that's actually one of my favorite times to go just generally because it's a lot less crowded than usual. And mm. it's they've got all the holiday decorations and everything up. So it's really it's a really cool time to be there. Um, but that's, those that's kind of four. Well, oh, now, yeah, wait absolutely. a minute. Before we go on, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. So Thanksgiving is is relatively inexpensive to go. There there aren't big crowds at Thanksgiving. No, there are at Thanksgiving. So uh, so from the end of food oh, okay. up to Thanksgiving. Up to Thanksgiving, okay. And right, then the right. Monday after Thanksgiving through Christmas. So yeah, don't go on Thanksgiving. That's a very busy time. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so that tends to be uh, some of the times when you can find the best discounts because they're trying to get people there because it's kind of the slow season. Um, there's a lot of times other than that that would be considered like average crowds, um, but generally speaking, that's going to be uh, the best time to go. And again, mm-hmm. um, you always want to look at the special offers. You want to contact me and let you know say we want to go during these dates and uh i can definitely look at the the special offers that are happening because those are going to be your best friends um another kind of rule of thumb is it tends to be uh a little bit more expensive on friday and saturday nights so if you can arrive on a sunday um or a monday and then go through like a five-day stay you might save a little bit of money by going uh by not being there on a friday or saturday night um so that's something else to kind of think about could that, um, could that possibly be, Tim, why our looper meet is on a Tuesday and Wednesday? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You guys are smart. You know your stuff. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of uh, throughout the entire year going to be some of the best times to go. Now, if you're looking specifically at summer, because a lot of us, we have school schedules or, you know, we don't have kids, but my wife's a teacher, so we can only go down uh, again during the school year. So um, or when it's, you know, the school year allows it. Right. Um, So if you're if you're kind of stuck going during the summer, um, the last uh, couple weeks of May uh, or mid August to late September, those are going to be the best. Uh, They're regular season times. They're not low season, um, but it's going to be better than going in June or July. Um, now it depends on your school schedules, obviously, because uh, that's 
kind of why they're a little bit less expensive because you can get those where a lot of families are starting to go back to school if your family goes back a little bit later then you can get in there and have a little bit of you know that last week uh maybe that first week in september the last week in august depending on where you are in the country and all that um but if you can if you can swing those times those are going to be a lot less expensive than it's going to be in june or july um on top of the crowds are going to be lower um all that it's it's just going to be a lot better times if you can swing that um so to give everybody kind of an idea i came up with some numbers here um so if uh so these are all there's four different things here that i have they're all two adults two children ages 10 and 8 and i picked 10 because 10 is a little bit more expensive for the tickets ages 3 through 9 are on the uh, the children's prices but 10 uh, is where you start having the adult prices for the theme park tickets. So if you have two children that are, uh, you know, between three and nine, uh, it actually might be a little bit less expensive. Um, so just so you guys know there. Um, so for an off-season stay, um, the, oh, and these are all, again, five nights, six days. So for an off-season, um, say January 15th through the 20th, uh, at the All-Star Movies Resort in a standard room, your room price is looking around 568 so $568 for a five-night, six-day stay. Uh, in peak season, so that's going to be like June, so mid-June, um, that exact same room at the All-Star Movies, the standard room, is going to be $757. Mm. So that's $188 more just uh, for that exact same room, exact same number of nights, but in January versus June. So that tells you just right there how much you can save if you can go during an off time. Mm -hmm. Um now, for the best time in summer, so if you go, uh, so that's mid-June, then in August, if you can go a little bit later, that same room is going to be $644. So that's $113 less than it would be if you went in June. So just having that, if you can swing that August, that late August, early September, you can save quite a bit of money just like that. Um, and then I, I went ahead and did September 3rd through the 8th, and it's down to 565. So it's actually $3 less to go that first week of September than it is to go in January. So if wow. you can, if you, if your school schedule works out like that, that's going to be your best bet. Um, now, like I've said, that's not always going to happen. Um, and so your best bet to save the best money uh, is going to be value resorts. That's really where a lot of your money is going to come out because whether you stay at a deluxe resort or whether you stay at a value resort, your park tickets are going to be the same price. Um, if you go with the dining plan, that's going to be the same price. So that's where you're going to save the most money in your in your thing. And then special offers, of course, as well. Right. Yeah, because those tickets are always going to be the same. There's nothing you can do about the tickets. It doesn't, it doesn't it, it, it's not based upon the room that you have or the resort that you're staying at. Um it's just that's what the price of the tickets are. And th those never go on any kind of discount. No. So you've got to look at the room, right? That's that's uh, that's, that's the key there. money saver. Yep, absolutely. Right. And uh, okay. there, if you have like a, when I worked for Corporate America, I had a couple um, like a, like Marriott had a, a very small discount on tickets. You might be able to save a little money there if your company offers something like that. Um, but as a general rule, the tickets are the ticket prices. That's what you're going to pay. So, yeah, it's that room that's really going to give you that that the difference in price there. Mm hmm. Now, one okay. way to save on tickets is the uh, park hopper option. Can you want to explain that? Uh, yeah. So uh, the park hopper, it's it's. I always say it's more of a case where you have to think about price versus the value of what you're paying for. Um, so for that family of four with the four day tickets, uh, the park hopper is going to be an additional two hundred and ninety four dollars. Um, however, it's going to give you a lot more freedom. So that that two, you know that almost three hundred dollars might be worth it. Um, so if you, so, for instance, um, if you want to take a, uh, take advantage of like uh, early morning, I'm sorry, extra magic hours in the morning at Epcot. Um, but be our guest only has a reservation open for dinner that night. You kind of have to pick. Do you want to do the Epcot? extra magic hours that morning or do you want to do be our guest that night you have to make that decision whereas if you have the park hopper you can take advantage of both of those um and then think like uh animal kingdom it's opening later but there are still some days when it's closing at 7 p.m or 5 p.m um but if you break down how much that costs that park hopper costs um it's going to be like 19 dollars per person per day for those tickets um, so wow. if somebody, if you're, you know, at five o'clock in the afternoon, if you're like, well, you know, ready to go, if somebody said, well, you can go over to Hollywood studios until midnight tonight for 20 bucks. 
per person you might you probably want to go um so it really kind of frees you up and gives you that freedom and i i we go like two or three times a year and i can't imagine we're we're pass holders now mm -hmm. uh but back when we weren't i i cannot imagine going without the park hopper now um now that being said if you're going for four days and you're really on a tight budget and you really kind of you know that's that's the biggest factor there leave it off because you can still have a full day in each of the four parks and have an amazing time um but just i mean you have to really factor out how that's going to work out if you know as far as scheduling goes and mm -hmm. you know everything like that and for a lot of people they go and what they really want is to eat at all these different places you know things like be our guest and cinderella's royal table and you know that's a huge part of the disney experience and if they only have certain availability on certain nights you know you'd kind of have to decide well i guess you know we're not going to take advantage of those extra magic hours here or you know whatever the case may be so that's just something to really think about, you know, the price versus the value of what you're actually getting. And the more tickets days that you purchase, the the cheaper they are too, right? What's what's kind of the, like the break off point? What, how many days does it really become a good value? So after you, I usually say after four days. So if you're there for four days and you know, uh, you know, budgets of an issue, I say go with the you know the the one day tickets. But after that. If you're going to be there for a week and you have seven day tickets, it's really going to behoove you to to do that park hopper because it's going to be the same price whether you have four day tickets or seven day tickets, but the ticket prices themselves are going down. Um, so it really is going to be it. Well, but then you have to look at the other side of that, too. If you're only going for two days, but you want to hit three or four parks, which I have done, I don't necessarily recommend, but it can be done, <laughs> then then the park hoppers you're going to have to have. Um, and really, it, it boils down to a case by case basis. It depends on. You know how you like to tour if you are there and you want to ride rides and you want to hit everest and space mountain and you're only there for two days you know you're gonna to have to get the park hoppers um but if you're just going and you're just relaxing uh you know it really depends it's, it really is a case-by-case -case basis okay what uh what's the now i'm doing this here's another way you can save and you you are going to touch on this but i have that disney credit card and just to let everybody know and i haven't really been using it all that much and I have thirty-three dollars in rewards on that credit card. Nice. So why don't you why don't you tell people about this uh, credit? Because I'm going to use that. I'm going when I go down. I'm going to use oh, yeah. that for lunch. I get a oh, free absolutely. lunch out of out of having a Disney uh, Visa card. Oh, absolutely. Well, and that's what I did when I went down uh, in September um, for the the travel agent training down there. We still had dinners on our own, and I we have a Disney credit card as well. And I used that. That paid for like three out of four dinners. Um, it really so so how that works. Um, you get uh, two percent, and this is as of now. Always subject to change, you know. Uh, but as of now, you get two percent cash back on gas groceries and disney so anything you spend in disney whether it's a disney movie or parks whatever and then one percent cash back on everything else so you're paying for all this stuff anyway you mean you it's a, the exact same price except you're getting money back that you can then load onto a disney gift card and use and so it if you are saving up for a year or two you can use all that money and put it towards your reservation. So if you if mm -hmm. you have one of those you can just put it right towards your reservation and pay off a big chunk of your reservation or you can take it with you and what a lot of people do is take it with them and they use it for meals or souvenirs or you know things that while they're in disney you know that's where they want to use that card uh, but it really is great i mean we've saved so much money by doing that um and we use ours for everything we use it f to pay all of our bills off you know as much as we can and then just pay it off so we use it like a debit card um right. And then just pay it off at the end of every month, and then we just get all this cash back. It really is a great it's a it's a it's a great deal, um, right? If you use and, it correctly. And don't forget, they then you can uh, if you do go down during like uh, uh, food and wine, they have that uh, Chase uh, Lounge that you can go into. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. That's that's where the uh, Disney Visa card comes through. And then Tim, you purchase your gift cards oh yes this is this gets com complex you purchase gift cards to then you get uh gas points through the grocery store that you purchase the gift cards for then you use the gift cards to pay for your trip you got me doing this isn't it great i always, I always listen to tim <laughs> you should <laughs> sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i do Tyler, I use my Disney Visa card 
to buy the mm-hmm. Disney gift cards mm-hmm. to get cheap gas. And then I get the rewards on the Disney Visa card. I am double dipping. Yes. I love it. It's brilliant. And I will say, if you pay for a whole cruise with that, we did not pay for gas for like six weeks. There you go. There you go. So that's awesome. Well, go. another nice thing about that. So the uh, the the Play Stay and Dine offer they just came out with. Um, people that were uh, Visa Chase Visa card holders found out about that on the 28th um, of last month. Right. So they had like an extra week to uh, to get that room in like i said those things sell out pretty quickly so they had an extra week on top of that to to get in there and get those good discounts there you go good perk there you go absolutely great perk what's a is it worth getting you were talking about the park hoppers is it worth getting that water park and fun and more this is one i really go back and forth on um to be completely honest so the 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 water park fun and more um so for that same family of four that we were talking about earlier it's going to be 272 dollars uh additional um now how that works so you would get access to uh disney's typhoon lagoon and blizzard beach the two water parks you also get access to the espn wide world of sports uh the two miniature golf courses as well as disney's oak i'm sorry disney's oak trail golf course um and that you get as many entrances to those places as you have tickets for so if you have four day tickets you also have four op- or four visits to any of those attractions um so in theory so if you're there for eight days you can buy four day tickets with that water park fun and more and have eight days worth of things to do now right. that being said a lot of people don't really do a whole lot at the espn wide world of sports and all that you know that's not a huge draw Mm -hmm. um that if you're going during the summer and you want to go to the water parks i say do it because it's a lot cheaper to do it that way than to do than to buy tickets at the gate but if you're going anytime that's not during the summer um you know they're always subject to seasonal changes or seasonal closures and all that um and if the the wide world of sports doesn't really appeal to you and golf and all that i would say skip it um so it really again it's it's a case-by-case basis as is everything with disney um but if you really want to do the water parks then absolutely but if that's not real high on your priority list i say just just skip it here's here's what i think that where that would really um work for some people and that is if you're going to spend your uh five nights uh with a four-day ticket and all that at Disney, and then you still have another week where you're staying off property and you want to enjoy some of the other things that are going on around uh, the Orlando area, uh, that might actually be a good deal because don't those those things last for, what, 14 days after 14 purchase? 14 days, yeah. After, that so, first, after the first day you use it, yes. Right. So because I've always been of the opinion, look, I'm not going to the water parks if I have park tickets. That's that's kind of a waste of a you know a day for me, but if I'm using my park tickets while I'm staying on property, which allows me to get the free parking and and use the Disney transportation, right. but then I'm going to stay off property for some other reasons for another few days. It might be a good um, a good deal because then I can oh, go absolutely. to the water parks and. Uh, maybe do some golfing and things like that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that, and like I said, it, it, that's what I'm saying. It's a case by case basis, and that I would I would be all for. Um, so whatever your situation is, come talk to me, and we'll uh, we'll figure it out from there. But see that kind of situation, that's exactly right. That would be a great way to uh, to make that worth that extra money there. You could visit the water parks, do the golf, all that. Um, that really would be a good uh, a good use of money. Uh, now, the other thing is you can do both of those. So you can do the water park fun and more and the park hopper option added to your tickets. Um, and you do get a discount if you add both. Um, so just to add the park hopper, uh, it was 293. The water park fun and more 272. Uh, but if you add both, it's 400. Um, so you are saving money if you add both. So that's something else to kind of keep in mind on that that basis as well. Okay. But it would be best to talk to to Tyler over at People Mover Travel about that stuff. Uh, all right, yeah. now you're going to have this is this is going to be the toughest part of this show for you. <laughs> explain. <laughs> well, any any time you explain anything to me and Tim, it's the toughest part of the show. Get the Rosetta explain, Stone. <laughs> explain the whole dining plan thing. Is it a value? How is it a value? Okay, so here's what I always say. 
the dining plan can save you money. What? But that does not mean that it is the cheapest option. <laughs> so let me explain. Hmm. So by doing a Disney dining plan, you can save 10 to 20, even 25% off of your dining costs if you get some of the more expensive options on the menu. Um, so like, for instance, every time that, you know, we go and we've had the Disney dining plan or the quick service dining plan, whatever, I've always kept track of how much we've spent mm -hmm. with what we you know, what we got and all that. And we've always saved money. Inevitably, we have saved money. But if we were paying out of pocket, we probably would have eaten a lot differently. Right. So, you know, for, you know, that one dining credit is going to be good for a burger and it's going to be good for a steak. And the burger might be $10 and the steak might be 25 So if, if we went up, I, I would get the burger. But if we're on the dining plan and I've already paid for it, I'm getting the steak because it's 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 20, you know, it's 15 bucks more and it's still one dining credit. So right. you can save a lot of money on the food that you eat if you kind of consciously make that effort to get your money's worth. But that does not necessarily mean that it is going to be the cheapest option when you're looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so if you very roughly speaking, think about, um, so if we assume my math is correct, which is something we should never ever do, everybody should always double check me. <laughs> <laughs> um, a quick service credit is worth give or take 18 to $20 table service credits are worth about 40 and the snack credits are worth about five. Um, so if you're wanting to do like some signature restaurants, um, so like Cinderella's Royal table is $55 for an adult for dinner. Um, but that requires two table service credits. So you're going to spend, you know, if the, each one is $40, you're spending $80 on a meal that you could have paid out of pocket for $55. Oh. So that's not going to be worth it. So the, the two tables, the signature dining is, is almost never worth using your dining plan for, but then you're kind of stuck with, well, if I pay for that out of pocket, I have an extra meal to use somewhere else. Um, right. so that's, you have to think about that. Now, if you're not going to do a lot of the signature dinings, if you're not doing Le Cellier and all that, um, then again, we can look at that and we can see, is this going to be your best bet? Cause if you want to do a lot of table service, uh, restaurants, it could save you money if you know that your family has a lot of big eaters in it and things like that. Um, but if, if you have some finicky eaters, picky eaters, you guys, you know, you, you eat mostly salads. Again, that $10 salad is going to be one dining credit and the $30 steak is going to be one credit. Uh, it's usually not that big of a gap. But it really depends on each person's family. If you're a family of big eaters, then the dining plan might be worth it because you can inevitably save money if everybody's getting those big meals. Um, so it really kind of depends on, on the family and so on and so forth. Um, now, the least expensive way that we have found to do to eat in Disney, uh, Jessica and I, my wife, um, we go on the first day we get there. If we don't have the dining plan, go to the sundry shop. Most uh, resorts have some pretty decent sundries um, as far as, you know, bagels and sandwiches and all that some don't as a matter of fact i was just at coronado springs and their food they did not have a lot so if that's the case if you go to if you're at a place where they don't have a whole lot of uh options you might have to hop over to you know ride the monorail to the grand floridian and you can go visit the grand floridian anyway and then pick up some groceries and stuff while you're there um so we'll go and we'll get bagels uh stuff for sandwiches fruit all that kind of stuff and then each day before we leave the room, we'll have you know a little bit of breakfast, maybe even make a sandwich and take it with us to the parks, um, and then just have one meal in the park per day. Um, so that's the least expensive way that we have found um, to do it. Now, of course, you can order groceries, and we've done that before, but I think it ended up being a little bit more expensive because um, those grocery um, those grocery options tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, but so that's how we have found to to do it the least expensive way. But if you want that all-inclusive feel, if you want to pay for everything up front and you know be good, so you don't have to worry about it while you're there, um, and if you know your family's big eaters, then I would say go with the dining plan. But again, case by case basis, come talk to me and we'll we'll figure out what's going to be best for you and your family. Um, so I have found that so when you should go with the dining plan, um, you should go when it's free. If you want that all-inclusive feel, or if you are big foodies and you know that your guys are going to eat some more expensive items then definitely go with the Disney dining plan. And if you go on My Disney Experience, you can actually look at the menus and kind of get an idea of what it's going to cost out of pocket. Um, and if you think you guys are going to, it's going to be worth it, if you know where you want to go, then then definitely do that. Um, if, when to not go with the dining plan. Uh, if you're on a really tight budget, if you have the finicky eaters, or you want to go to a lot of signature restaurants. Um, 
So that's my very, very long explanation of <laughs> of the dining plan. And I'm sure I've confused more people than I've helped. <laughs> so just contact me and we'll go over it. Yeah, I think that's important. I think everybody should do that. Always better get a consultant in there. Help you out with this massive vacation planning. <laughs> well, and yeah, a lot I of people a think... I think a lot of people, as soon as they see that signature restaurant, uh, they say, oh, we better get the dining plan because that's going to be a better value if we if we have the dining credits uh, for those signature restaurants. But you, you cleared that up right away. That that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And if and, but then on the other hand, a lot of the character dining, that's not the signature dining. That mm -hmm. is a good use of a credit. Um, you can save money right. there. But yeah, those signature restaurants, those those will get you. So be careful with those. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. So, uh, all right. So let's let's wrap this all up. Recap this whole thing. Best time to go. This, all in all in like six seconds. And best, go. <laughs> best time to go. Uh, dining or no dining. Uh, tickets. Okay. Go. Uh, so uh, I feel like I'm already out of time. Okay. So the best times to go during the year. <laughs> it's gonna be. Um, so uh, early. Uh, I'm sorry. I see. Now I'm all flustered. <laughs> Second week of January. <laughs> through February, Labor Day through the start of food and wine, end of food and wine through Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving through the week before Christmas. That's going to be the best times year round. Cheapest times to go in summer are very early summer or very late summer. That's going to be your best bet if you can swing it with your school schedule. Um, tickets to park hop or not, I am always for park hopping. I, I, I think m nine times out of ten, that's going to be a really good value for your money. Uh, the dining plans, they're convoluted and complicated and just call me. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all of this, actually. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, special offers are your friends. Um, so the more And the more flexible you are, whether it be with your dates or whether you're with your resort, all that is going to be the best. I, I'll be able to take advantage of those special offers. So if you if you say, you know, I want to go to Port Orleans Riverside and that's where I have to go. Well, if they announce a special offer and they say Port Orleans Riverside is not available, if you're not willing to move to a different resort, you know, then that's kind of you're kind of stuck at that rack rate. But if you're a little bit more flexible, you said, well, we can go to French Quarter, we can go to uh, Coronado Springs or something like that. I might be able to get you a lot better deal. Um, dates I know are a little bit more tricky for people, but if you're just a little bit willing to to work with me, then we can get you a really good deal. Um, but the best foolproof strategy when it comes to trying to get the lowest price in Disney is stay in a value resort when prices and crowds are at their lowest. That's going to be your best bet across the board. Excellent. Done. Excellent. I love <laughs> and, it. And that's, that's very good. And and listen, guys, if you, you know, you're thinking about... Well, I can't take the kids out of school. Go back to our episode 351 where uh, Tim and his wife talk about taking the kids out of school and whether that's a, a, a good idea or not. Um, that's episode 351. But uh, that sounds fantastic to me, Tim. What What do you think? We we going to book something now? Book it, Dano. Or Tyler Rowe. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Rowe? Oh, that's why I had to think of something to rhyme. Mm, book it, yeah, Tyler. What he was talking about. <laughs> Look, the bottom line is, the bottom line is this is why... This is why we we decided to uh, partner up with PeopleMoverTravel.com and Tyler. Uh, it's so complex, and it's it's just it overwhelms you. You get stressed out when you book this stuff. Now it's so much easier because you can just contact Tyler over PeopleMoverTravel.com. Let him take care of it, and uh, and and you're good to go. He can you just tell him how many are in your party, what times you're you're thinking about. He'll he'll put it all together for you, and then you guys can talk about, you know, even specifics after that. So that's right. And book well, way in advance. Oh yeah. Well, and and speaking of booking in advance, I have several people that have already booked that are going in that January through March. Um, and this morning, I was going through and getting people those new discounts that were just released for those times. So the you know, they booked, you know, maybe a couple months ago, and so they've already got exactly the room they want. They've got the package they want. But now I'm able to go in. And just reduce the price of their package based on these on these new discounts that came out. And as soon as that happened this morning, I was on the computer trying to get them uh, the best deals available. So even if you book pretty far out, I keep an eye on that um, and try and get you the best deal that uh, that they're going to have. And you made lots of people happy today. Oh, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, saving so, money is always a good thing. Absolutely, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you've uh, cleared up quite a bit of it for uh, Stacy. I hope that uh, these this answered a lot of Stacy's questions about uh, going down, 
And um, if not, Stacy, contact uh, Tyler over at PeopleMoverTravel.com. All of you, uh, he'll set you up. He'll get you the best deal for when you want to go and uh, and how you want to travel. So uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Tim, yes, Bob. That's all I've got for Tyler. Well, Tyler, thank you very much. Where, once again, can people find you? So you can find me at peoplemovertravel.com. Uh, you can go and fill out a uh, no-obligation quote request that comes right to me, and I get back with you within just a couple days. Or you can contact me at tyler at peoplemovertravel.com. Oh, awesome, Tyler. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. I'm Tim Scott. You can find me on Twitter, Resort Loop Tim, on Facebook at Tim Scott, and the website, resortloop.com. I'm Resort Lou Bob on the Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget uh, to like us on Facebook, rate us on iTunes, listen on iHeartRadio. Come see me at the end of October. And Tim, what else should people do? Everyone go out there and tell than, you. What? Other than book through Tyler. We always book through Tyler. Right. So, then go out there and share with your friends the gateway to the magic. See you, everybody. All right, Tim, so everybody has, uh, you know, they've stopped listening to the show now. What should they do after they're done listening to the show and they're all excited about wanting to go to a Disney park, going on a Disney vacation? What, what, what should they do? I, personally, after being all excited and ready to go, uh-huh. I'm going to deal with an expert. Uh-huh. I'm going to talk to People Mover Travel and talk to Tyler, our expert over there. Over at PeopleMoverTravel.com? PeopleMoverTravel.com. But when you go there, yes, you got to make sure you click on that you heard about them from us. From Resort, Resort Loop. Resort Loop. That is an option on the drop-down menu right there. Absolutely. By the way, Tim. Yes. I just booked through them. How did that go? It was the easiest thing in the world. How can it not be? It's Tyler. I put in my name. I put in the dates I want. Right. Of course, checkmarked. Resort Loop is where I heard right. of them from. Uh, and sent it off to them. Within an hour, Tyler had gotten back to me. I can't guarantee he's going to get back to everybody that quick, but got back to me in a, within an hour, letting me know he got it, and he'll let me know as soon as he runs the numbers. Tyler and his team know travel. PeopleMoverTravel.com is fantastic. Love. Easy. You and I have done it a million times on our own. And we missed out on discounts here and there because we're not on top of it all the time. I'm done doing that. Why would we have to do it? Tyler, the people move and travel, will do it for you. So, you want to hear more about our Disney Resort hotels? Well, you came to the right place. You won't believe all the magical benefits you get. 